In this video, we will discuss about ER stress, stress measurement. So we have already discussed about UPR, that is unfolded protein response, that leads to ER stress. And in this video, we will discuss in more details and and how this uh, sensor actually works uh, that we have discussed in the uh, one of the previous videos that uh, there are three signals that actually activated when the UPR stress exerted three major uh, signals one is the ATF4 uh, signaling another is XBP1 uh, intron removal and third one is ATF6 so uh, we will understand uh, uh, that the paper describes or the paper uh, describes about the two sensors that they have made that can detect ER stress in the cells and those two sensors are based on one is based on ATF4 uh, changes that changes actually uh, occurred in the cells and next one is about the removal of intron in XBP1. So let us start with the ATF4 uh, ATF4 sensor. So what happens in the non-stress condition? In non-stress condition, uh, transcription or translation starts from open reading frame one, open reading frame two, uh, but it will not start from open reading frame three. So uh, what happens? Uh, when the ER stress is not there is that translation will begin uh, at open reading frame 1 and it will end at the open reading frame uh, at the end of open reading frame 1 and if translation begins at open reading frame 2 it will end at the end of open reading frame uh, 2 it will not translate this M scarlet or NLS signal and when this M scarlet is not translated, it is the flu red fluorescence, uh, it will give the red fluorescence when it is being translated. So when the, this thing is not translated further, there will be no signal in the cells. So in non-stress condition, this uh, we will not see any red signal. Whereas in stress condition, uh, translation or transcription starts from open reading frame 3 and when the transcription or translation starts from open reading frame 3 it will then end at the end of this plasmid in this case this m scarlet will translate and this what this nls, NLS signal done is nls means nucleotide localization signal it will uh, move this translated m scarlet to a, in the nucleus uh, so instead of uh, being segre segregated out in the cytoplasm all the translated M scarlet and with NLS move towards the nucleus so that we will get a more bright signal so in case of ER stress uh, this signal uh, ATF4 will translate it this plasmid of ATF4 will translate it along with M scarlet and NLS, NLS. so we can see we can observe the uh, we can see the ER stress under any fluorescence measuring uh, instrument that can measure M scarlets uh, that can measure M scarlet signal and same is the case with IRE1 in IRE1 non non stress condition this intron uh, remains intact and in non stress condition when this plasmid the translation occur it will end at uh, just before the M neon green uh, signal so that this green signal and NLS part will not be translated so we will not see any signal however in case of ER stress this intron part is removed that is 26 base pair that leads to the frame shift in the further se sequencing and that finally leads to the formation of M neon green and NLS signal and after that there is a end occur so in this case also the, when there is a ER stress the removal of intron occurs and because of the frame shift the M neon and NLS will translate it 
and we will see the green signal uh, when there is a uh, ER stress occurred and this XBP is been uh, transcribed or translated. After that, uh, they did another checking uh, that is whether uh, when the signal is uh, when the signal is shown, then whether this signal is shown because of their uh, translation of this plasmid or it is because of some other reason and also when the signal is showing because translation of this plasmid whether it is actually representing ER stress or not so for this they did the western blot they know that chop uh, chop protein is usually produced when there is a ER stress so they did the western blot of the uh, cells at different time period first one is the non treatment second one is at zero hour uh, the instantly when it is treated with a ER stress introducing agent that is uh, in this case they have used Thepsi Gargan and DMSO after that they measured it uh, second time like 2.5 hours 7 hours 9, 9 hours and they use Vinsulin as a uh, control so that they can be ensure that sample is present and what they have seen that after uh, or in 2.5 hours the H tag they used H tag as a instrument to detect it H tag as a uh, instrument or is a way to detect it in the western blot so they have find out that H tag starts to represent starts to shown in the western blot after 2.5 hours and uh, with subsequent time the signal of HA is increasing and same has occurred with the uh, chop uh, but the chop signal is becoming more uh, bright after uh, like in 5 minutes 7 minutes and 9 minutes this is because the response of the chop in ER stress is delayed however uh, this ATF sensors will uh, reflect immediate effect so this is also one of the advantage of uh, using this ATF4 sensor and same thing they have done with uh, same thing they have done with XBP1 in this case also they have used the controlled as insulin and the they all they, uh, this M neon green also has the HA tag so it can be detected by anti HA uh, antibody so uh, in this case uh, in 2.5 hours it does not show any response however after in 5 7 9 hours it shows the presence of western blot shows the presence of uh, uh, presence of uh, a transcription or and translation of this uh, plasmid and at the same time chop uh, is also starts to appear so both of this signal are the representation are the current representation of ER stress for, that has been uh, proved with the help of this western blot however the problem that they are facing right now is that they are using transient transfection uh, because of and because of the because uh, they are unable to control the efficiency of transient transfection each time uh, the signals intensity is different and they are not able to get the reproducible result as it can be seen in the graph that uh, this one uh, is graph for ATF4 uh, that is ATF4M scarlet and we can see in this figure also that uh, uh, this figure is uh, just the representation of DMS and type C garbage how uh, we can see in the graph that uh, one signal has very good intensity another signal has very low intensity a third one has the different intensity and same occurs when it is treated with TMSO and similar result they have observed for uh, XBP1 or the green object area 
and where when they try to find out uh, any significant difference significant difference between uh, uh, significant difference between the uh, signal's intensity based on DMS1 Thepsi Gargan and based on uh, the DMS1 Thepsi Gargan in ATF4 and XVP1 they have find out that the uh, statistically there is no, no significant difference between both the signals and one of the reason why they got this result is because uh, the because of the large variability between the different replicates so they switched from transient transfection to the lentivirus infection so that uh, they can integrate their plasmid into the host genome so next what they did is they uh, they try to make their uh, signal they try to make their uh, plasmid uh, available to a, a wide a variety of instruments that does not use bright field but instead they use uh, they can use different kind of dye uh, for detection that's why they test the effect of dye on their uh, signaling so they have used two kind of dye one is drag q uh, another one is uh, hoist one uh, hoist and they have found out that there is a Uh, there is an increase in the uh, signal uh, with the use of dyes as it can be seen in the shown in the images for both ADF4 and XBP1 uh, so from this they predicted that these dyes are also These dyes are uh, also responsible or also have certain uh, contribution towards ER stress or dye also contribute towards ER stress. So what they have finally uh, used for the analysis is that they used bright field images and uh, big, uh, with the help of confluency mask they segregated out the section which has uh, the cells in it and then they use uh, and then they use the software to identify uh, the segmented image and from this they can count or find out the area of the uh, cells that are either red fluorescence or green fluorescence and uh, uh, this is the uh, result uh, that in previous slides we have uh, seen only in figures this is the result in in terms of graph or we can say quantitative uh, results that is without stain the signal is uh, too low around 30 percent whereas uh, with 1.2 micromolar track Q signal is high both with DMS1 type C gargan and with hoist 1.2 micromolar the signal also remains high or it starts with a higher point <coughs> and same is the case occurred with XBP1 for XBP1 also the uh, signal starts a signal for an unstained cell is very low or it is low around 30 whereas with a stained cell that with track Q and whole echoist signal is uh, quite high so this indicates that dye also has some uh, contribution towards ER stress so in order to uh, uh, further investigate uh, uh, so uh, so in order to confirm their point what they did is, did is they 
use the dye at different concentration so they only did it with hoist because the other dye that is drag q does not remain uh, stable uh, till 16 hours at lower concentration so they did it with hoist and they have find out that with decrease in dye concentration the gas gases decreases and uh, how uh, below a certain uh, concentration the ER stress and uh, below a certain concentration ER stress reaches uh, to a point where it is similar to the ER stress with without any dye and say so their thing they observed for both ATF4 and XBP1 uh, positive cells uh, and so another thing that they have uh, think of is that uh, this dye uh, the increase in the uh, ER stress it might be uh, due to the fluorescence that releases by the dye that causes a phototoxicity effect and so what they have did is they identify uh, they uh, did the experiment with a lower intensity of uh, lower intensity of emission and uh, lower intensity of uh, emission and fluorescence uh, or we can say lower intensity for excitation and emission yeah lower intensity for excitation and emission and they find out the signal goes decreases uh, for drag q and uh, so but uh, and for uh, hoist also but it uh, and but for XPP1 they have find out that uh, for DMSO or uh, DMSO signal uh, and the Thapsi Gargan signal also does not uh, goes down within XBP1. So finally, what they concluded that uh, this ER stress because of dye is partially uh, due to uh, phototoxicity, and uh, rest of them is due to uh, synergetic effect of dye and uh, Thapsi Gargin. Uh, we can say the ER stress inducer, Thepsig Argin or DMSO. Because of their, their synergetic effect, it might lead to enhanced ER stress. So next, uh, they did is, next, they did is uh, multiplex assay uh, analysis. So, what they did is multiplex assay analysis. They uh, first uh, infect the cell with lentivirus separately and then add these two population in one ratio one in a 384 well plate and so now each well contains equal portion of uh, both uh, the population of cells uh, that are infected with virus and uh, for this assay they have used the minimum excitation and minimum excitation and emitted fluorescence excitation and emitted uh, emission wavelength so that uh, they will have uh, low reduced impact of the fluorescence. Uh, uh, so they will have reduced impact of the uh, uh, reduced impact of photosecticity on ER stress. So and on and this is the result that they have uh, presented and the multiplex assay that is unstained and with the uh, stain dmso and with hoist and, uh, dmso and it can be seen that the signal is uh, almost half compared to the experiment uh, that has been uh, done with single cell uh, with cells infected with single virus in a single well 
and this is expected as the number of population of cells are low you know, almost half in a well compared to the previous experiment and so what they finally suggested is they finally suggested is if to use bright field to get the uh, correct laser result as much as uh, possible and use single type of cell in each well for better signal uh, because multiplex assay will give lower signal because of the lower population of cells in each well however they did not did any analysis where cells are been uh, transfected with single cells where cells, single cells are been transfected with both the virus so i used uh, the uh, this paper uh, in order in order to check the stress uh, in my project so what is the hypothesis that i have developed from the proteomics experiment of my uh, samples uh, my i have used four kind of samples one is calnexin knockout calreticulum knockout mox knockout and another one is wild type and what i have found out that in case of cal reticulum knockout the ea stress from the bioinformatics analysis is highest and then the calnexin knockout then the mox knockout and then the type uh, wild type which does not have ea stress so this is my expectation from the ea stress experiment so now let us see what the how the result uh, comes from the ea stress experiment so these are the result for Uh, ATF4 reporter. Now, first graph shows the ER stress uh, in calreticulum knockout is uh, very high compared to the calnexin knockout. And the values are values of the cell count are almost around 11,000, 12,000 between. And this uh, jerk is because uh, of the change in the medium of the well has occurred. It has resulted in Uh, disruption of the cell's position that might somehow leads to uh, this change in the signal and second graph is about the mox knockout and uh, i have also uh, done the experiment on double knockout one is calnexin calreticulum knockout however at this point of time uh, we don't have the data of bioinformatics and after Uh, we get the bad data by informatics we can predict what is going on within the cells so far uh, we can only measure the er stress and we can see that er stress initially it seems like it is more in double knockout however later on the mox knockout take over this error bar is uh, defines the standard error range uh, standard error range Uh, standard error number and the last one is about the control so control is essential as it will show that our signals are uh, genuine are not the uh, background so first one the yellow one it seems like has the uh, wild type without any reporter with hepsi argin and the uh, red one coincide with the yellow one so they both seems to be lie on the same line and the next one is the blue one so or the cyan it has hex 293t cells or wild type cells uh, without hepsi argin and it has the reporter of atf mode however after uh, the change in the medium there is a increase in the signal and this could be uh, because of the er stress developed because of high confluency within the cell that could be one of the reason and this is the er stress uh, this pink color is of the er stress that are generated because of thapsi argin in the wild type cell what thapsi argin does is thapsi argin inhibit the circa uh, cycle so in this because of this the calcium homeostasis that is been the maintained by er stress got disrupted and this leads to uh, er stress within the endoplasmic reticulum that is uh, that result in uh, atf4 uh, signal 
ATF4 active signal activation and XBP1 signal activation. So this uh, high rate of signal, uh, this high uh, signal uh, represents the ATF4 signal activation. And in the first two figure, we can see that the magnitude of ER stress in calliculum knockout is around 10 times higher than magnitude of ER stress in MOX and Calnex in calliculum knockout almost 10 or not the 8 or 9 times here it is 1600 here it is uh, around 11500 so what information that we have got from bioinformatics from the proteomics results of the uh, knockout that calreticulum will has higher stress it seems to be correct and then it comes about the calnexin knockout and then the mox knockout however we are yet to is, uh, get the result from about calreticulum calnexin double knockout and why there is a uh, change occur that can be also be interpreted from or can or cannot be interpreted from the bioinformatic results and the last one is about the same things but with about xbp1 reporter yeah, yeah one thing that need to be understand that signal intensity is quite low compared to atf4 one of the reason could be that the lentivirus concentration that is used uh, is is low in uh, this uh, is low in this experiment that is that includes xbp1 reporter compared to the signals lentivirus that is being used for uh, stable transfection in atf4 uh, reporter however uh, the trend shows the similar uh, thing as it is as it is shown in the atf4 reporter and also in the bioinformatics that ER stress is high in calreticulum knockout than the calnexin knockout and same is uh, been uh, shown in here also uh, that ER stress is high in uh, almost similar in uh, MOX knockout and calnexin and calreticulum uh, knockout and uh, it is difficult to say at this point well, which one is higher or both of them are same however we can see the peak uh, value in the calnexin knockout is around uh, 19 whereas peak value here it is around uh, in mox knockout is around 18 or uh, it is in calnexin it is slightly higher than the mox knockout we can see that and for the control also shows the a similar trend that the signal is because of the uh, ER stress that is when the thefsic organ is introduced in the hex cells with XBP1 reporter whereas when uh, there is no thefsic organ or there is no reporter then the there is no uh, increase in the signal so this shows that for the from these results one uh, now shows that the ER stress uh, will is higher in calreticulum knockout. This means that calreticulum plays a more important role, and it is difficult for the calnexin or to compensate. Uh, it is difficult for the calnexin or to compensate the loss of cal uh, absence of calreticulum. Whereas in case of calnexin knockout. ER stress is low and one of the reason could be that calreticulum might be compensating the function of calnexin and in case of MOX knockout uh, both of them that is if not the calnexin then calreticulum might be uh, compensating the uh, calreticulum might be compensating the uh, function of box uh, that is uh, glucosidase 1 glucosidase 1 knockout uh, however uh, the 
function of uh, glucosidase 1 and calreticulum is quite different so it might be possible that uh, calreticulum might be able to detect or may be able, may be able to interact with the uh, proteins uh, that are not monoglucosylated or even in a triglycosylated condition. However, uh, this thing needs further investigation in order to confirm this kind of uh, uh, this kind of result, uh, this kind of uh, uh, rationally. So that's all for this video. Uh, and this video might have gone slightly longer however it is essential to cover all the things so that you can understand this ER stress in detail so thank you for your time